Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel and today uh, we're going to do the second part of the uh, patch 9.6 preview on the test server. Uh, yesterday or actually the day before yesterday we had a look at the new AMX CDC which turned out to be quite a good tank actually and today we're going to have a look at its competition the STA2. This is a tier 8 Japanese premium vehicle that will be introduced in 9.6 and it actually is very similar to the standard tier 8 medium tank of a Japanese tech tree, the STA-1. I, they already sound very similar. So it is slightly inferior to the standard tank, but it still is a decent machine. However, it has got some drawbacks that I will go over now. First of all, it's got 1,420 hit points, which is very much for a tier 8 medium tank. Actually, there's only one tank in the game that has got more hit points than that, and that is the STA-1. So, the STA-2 has got slightly less, but it's still the second highest hit points of any medium tank at tier 8. It's got a weight of 35 tons. Its engine power is 500, so that actually means that its specific power is only 14.51. So, that is actually slightly less than that of the STA-1, which is two more so really this tank is somewhat sluggish also it only has got a top speed limit of 45 kilometers an hour so really the uh, movement characteristics of this vehicle are more similar to a fast heavy it's not really like a classical medium tank the turret turns at 44 degrees per second which is quite decent hull traverses 44 degrees per second too so that's actually quite nice now, the bad thing about this tank, though, is the armour. And at the front, you've got 45 at the front of a hull, 70 at the front of a turret. Really, nothing will ricochet off your hull armour, and only if you get very, very lucky, shots will bounce off your gun mantlet sometimes, but you cannot rely on it. Side armour is garbage as well, and we don't even have to talk about the rear armour. So this is a very lightly armoured tank, and... Um, it isn't like the AMX CDC, which at least had the speed to outmaneuver its enemies and avoid shots. This tank is very sluggish, so you will get shot at, and if you get shot at, you will get penetrated and it will hurt. So, yeah, really, you cannot take any punishment in this vehicle at all. Now, the gun is somewhat interesting, actually, because it is not the same gun that the STA-1 uses, it is the second best gun of the STA-1. So if we look at the tech tree of the STA-1, this is the top gun on it, the 90mm Type 61, but uh, the gun that the STA-2 uses is the 90mm rifled gun. Now it is slightly different to the gun that the STA-1 gets, but really the characteristics are somewhat similar. So the calibre is obviously the same. The rate of fire is slightly better on the STA-2, the penetration is the same, 185, that is not very good really, I mean it is alright, and at, in tier 8 battles you will usually be able to, you know, penetrate most vehicles, but the problem with this tank is that it also, like the AMX CDC and the Panther 8.8, .8, doesn't get premium matchmaking. So that means that you will face tier 10 vehicles and in tier 9 and 10 games, 185mm of penetration is somewhat mediocre. The good news however is that you get 275mm heat shells which should be able to slice through the armour of most tanks in the game. Yeah, alpha damage is 240 which is average for a tier 8 medium tank. Accuracy is at 0.37 which isn't very good really. I mean it's alright but it's not really sniping accuracy like the CDCs is. It's more like medium to close range accuracy. And the aiming time is actually slightly better than on the sta ones gun with 2.2 seconds rather than 2.3. Now of course you always have to keep in mind that the gun I was comparing the STA-2's gun to was actually not the best gun on the STA-1 but only the second best. So really this tank so far is very much inferior to the STA-1 and that trend continues because its view range is also 10 less and the signal range is 30 meters less. So just judging from the stats this tank is not too good because what you really get is a 
STA1 with worse power to weight ratio and a worse gun and worse movement speed and signal range. So, I mean, why would you play this tank? I mean, one reason is obviously that it's a premium tank, so it will make lots of credits. And one advantage that this tank has got over the STA1 is its damage per minute. The STA1's damage per minute is 1920, while the STA2's damage per minute is 2028. But that is not too much of a difference, really. So, in my opinion so far, I mean, this tank is not so good unless it would get enhanced matchmaking, which it doesn't at the moment. But I think that's something they should probably change about this vehicle because with 185mm of penetration, it really cannot achieve anything in tier 10 matches. So I don't get the point why it shouldn't have uh, enhanced matchmaking. Especially because, for example, the Type 59, which has got very similar penetration to this tank, gets premium matchmaking and it's got better armor better maneuverability and um is just all in all really a better tank than this so for crew skills i would recommend just going for brothers in arms and repairs and six sense is always useful obviously a uh, firing of the move skills for a gun and driver would be very useful as well and um for equipment i run a vertical stabilizer tank gun rammer and vents so a fairly standard setup. Now, um, yeah, so much for the review in the garage. Now let's have a look how this tank performs in a battle. So here we are on Northwest and I've headed out to the northern part of the map because I hope to kind of flank round and um, yeah, get to the enemy base really. So um, yeah, as you can see, I'm quite lucky with my matchup in this game because it's on the test server and I managed to get into a tier 8 game, so that is quite lucky. And also another good fact is that there are lots of AMX CECs on the enemy team, so that means that um, there are many tanks, because like, they have got no armor at all, so that means I can penetrate their tanks quite easily, so that kind of negates the disadvantage that my bad penetration gives me. So. I put a shot into the enemy CDC there and as you can see the reload on this tank is actually very very good so you've got quite high DPM. Now I auto aim at the CDC so that I can uh, quickly put a shot in when I get around the corner. Many people actually don't realise how useful auto aim can sometimes be and I mean of course, in many situations, it gives you a disadvantage because you can't hit weak po points as often. So really, unless you absolutely need it, you shouldn't be using it. But for example, if you go around a corner, uh, then it can be useful to auto-aim at your enemy in advance because that means that your cursor will be straight away above the enemy vehicle. So I'm flanking round uh, and I get a shot at the rear of the enemy CDC. So he doesn't notice that I'm there at all and I managed to finish him off. However, the game is not looking good at all for my team because our enemies are pushing into our base from the south. So now I decide that I have to go back in order to help them out. And this CDC obviously is going to push towards the enemy base. I see an enemy AMX and I'm trying to get a shot on him but I don't have eyes on the target. And he draws the cover before I can fire. So I hope to hit him now, but that was a very bad shot by me and I miss him completely. However, I won't make that mistake I won't make that mistake again, sorry, and um, <laughs> I finish him off. That's my second kill and now actually things aren't looking too bad. The score seven to eight. So I hope to get a shot at A44, but he's behind the hill. So I turn left because enemy heavies are rolling into our base and can't have that happening boy that IS-6 just got hurt hard by that right metal and you can see that this tank is quite slow for a medium I mean it's not slow in general compared to the average world of tanks vehicle but most mediums have got better movement speed from this oh by the way that was 
that was a bit of a fail there. I just, movement speed is a League of Legends term, and I've just been playing way too much that game, so <laughs> I'm sorry for that. I mean, uh, speed, not movement speed. Okay, never mind. So, uh, as you can see, I bounced off the KV4 there, and that is because my penetration is not too good, and that is although the KV4 had a side facing towards me. So now I load heat ammunition, because I hope to penetrate the IS-6 that way. However, I miss my first heat shell. My second one pens though. And now I drive back behind this uh, bit of this little uh, undulation in the ground here. And the reason why I do that is because the IS-6 is reloaded, right? And I'm not. But by drawing back behind this little, um, yeah, little hill in the ground here, I will be able to shoot him once he comes around the corner because I'll have reloaded, so that gives me an advantage in this engagement. And with a high roll, I should be able to take him out now, really. So I drive round, he misses a shot, and no, I only hit his tracks, and heat is no good at all at penetrating tracks. So now I think just screw this, go round, take him out quickly before the T69 can hit me. He fires one shot, but it um, misses. So I go around, it's another shot into him. What I'm doing here is quite risky now, but, um, you know, it seems to work out, so why not? And he draws behind cover. Obviously, he's reloading now, so that means now I have to put pressure on him. So I decide to rush him. And he's reversing through this building, which is slowing him down. So what I do there is quite stupid, because I figured that I would be able to shoot through these uh, pieces of wood, but apparently I can't. And now I see that this STA-1 is firing at me. So I decide to ignore the T-69 for the time being, and just take out this STA-1, because he's uh, lower on lower health than the T-69 is. Unfortunately, that allows the T-69 to completely unload into me, and... Yeah, I get taken out. So, yeah, that was that game, and honestly, that was the best I could do so far in the STA2. Now, I haven't had that many games in this vehicle, but, um, yeah, the fact that this was the best game I could get is somewhat disappointing, really, because I mean, it wasn't too great. I mean, it was all right, but it wasn't awesome. So... Yeah, let's have a look at the post-game stats to see how well I did exactly, because this game's lost. So, these are the results of the game, and I managed to pick up 84,000, well, make that 85,000 credits, and 1,621 experience. So, uh, that is actually not bad, considering that this, this was a defeat. I got a Defender Medal and a Second Class Mastery Badge, and... Also, the most experience in the team, by far. I mean, I had three times as much as for Ryan Mattel Borsig, but, you know, that's what you get on the test server. And also the most damage in the team. So that was quite nice. Actually, um, there was only one tank on the enemy team that did more damage than me, and that was the KV-4. So that's quite nice, actually. I fired 20 shots, which is 16 hit. That sounds somewhat representative of what this tank can achieve, usually, because... 0.37 accuracy is kind of all right at the kind of ranges I was using it, but as soon as you start firing at longer ranges, like I was at the end against that STA-1, it becomes quite a pain, really, and I was quite lucky that all the shots hit. I penetrated 13 of my 16 shots, that means only 3 ricocheted, but you have to remember that I used heat ammunition to destroy the IS-6, and I would have never been able to frontally take him out with 185 millimeters of penetration. So, uh, just keep that in the back of your mind. But, you know, the premium ammunition in this tank is very, very strong. I dealt out just short of 2,800 damage, which is actually very good in a... Or well, not very good, but it's kind of decent in a tier 8 premium tank. And I received 7 hits, of which, surprisingly, only 6 penetrated. So I got very lucky with this one bounce here. That blocked 300 damage, and uh, I damaged 7 vehicles and destroyed 4. Let's have a look at the economy of this tank. I managed to receive 85,000 credits, basically, and was allowed to keep only 50,000. So that's actually not very good. The reason for that is because I had to spend 23,000 credits 
on resupplying my ammunition because I fired heat ammunition. So, I mean, still it's very hard to complain about 50,000 credits in the defeat, but it could have been a lot better if I wouldn't have had to load heat ammunition, which I definitely wouldn't have had to do if I would have been driving, for example, a Panther 8.8 or a AMX CDC. So, I mean, really, you've either got the choice of, you know, not performing too well because you just cannot penetrate some vehicles like the SIA-6 or the KV-4, or you load heat ammunition and then the drawback is that you won't make as many credits. Yeah, what do I think in total about this tank? I mean, it's not bad, but honestly, I just think that tanks like the Panther 8.8 or the AMX CDC are just so much better. And really, this could be an amazing vehicle, or not an amazing vehicle, but a pretty good vehicle, if they would just give it enhanced matchmaking. I do not see any reason why this tank, w why this tank wouldn't get enhanced matchmaking. It definitely should get it, and if it would, I would definitely recommend this tank. The way it is right now, though, I think it's somewhat underpowered, really, because it just cannot compete with or cannot properly compete with just other tier 8 medium tanks and even other tier 8 medium premium tanks except for maybe the super pershing which is somewhat inferior really but except for that in its current condition i wouldn't really recommend buying this tank unless you are really just crazy about japanese mediums and want to and really want to get this uh, extra crew training for your STB-1 crew for example but unless that's the case you would probably be way better off getting your hands on a Panther 8.8 .8 or an AMX CDC because their guns just outperform the STA-2's gun by a lot and I mean really for example the Panther 8.8 .8 is just as slow as this tank it's got a better gun and better armor so I just don't really see the point of this tank in its current condition. But I mean maybe you guys have got another opinion so please let me know what you think about this vehicle in the comments and yeah I hope you enjoyed this video if you did consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even subbing to my channel and I hope I see you in one of my next videos or maybe even on the battlefield. My next video will probably be coming up in uh, just short of a week's time because now I'm going to take a short break because I did very many videos in a short time now. So um, yeah bye bye.